So on today's 411, we're here in Gulfport at the very new Cancer Center. It's being led by medical oncologist Dr. Shadid. Yeah, we're so glad to have you, Dr. Shadid. And this place is really, uh, the facilities team did a great job uh, doing it themselves in-house on uh, making this Cancer Center in Gulfport look great. It's a great asset, but our greatest asset is you. We're so glad to have you on our team, uh, already uh, seeing patients here in Gulfport and a great addition to the all-star cancer team that we have. And we're just so delighted that we're able to provide life-saving cancer services to our community. And one of the goals of the 411 is to share with the public a little bit about the types of things we can do, kind of come behind the scenes and, and share with them some things we can do. But why don't you tell them a little bit about some of the most common or, or types of cancers that you treat and deal with and how you, know, you can help them uh, by knowing a little bit about what, what are some of the types of cancers that, that, that you specialize in. The most common cancers that we see here would be breast cancer, lung cancer, and colon cancer would probably be our top three. Um, but we take care of the uh, entire spectrum of various types of cancers as well, as well as all the diseases that happen in the blood, uh, clotting issues, bleeding issues. A lot of people don't know that, that cancer oncologists, uh, they handle that as well. A lot of people don't, don't even know that. Well, tell us about how some of these types of cancers can be detected. You know, how do you find out if you have uh, colon cancer, breast cancer? Give us a couple examples. Well, all women starting at age 40 should have mammograms at least once a year. If you have a first degree relative, you know, uh, sibling, mother, or child who has um, cancer, you should uh, get a mammogram starting 10 years before they were diagnosed. If, you know, starting, um, and then at the same time, colon cancer, the guidelines have recently changed. All people starting at age 45 should have a colonoscopy and should be in communication with their gastroenterologists. Um, pap smears on a you know annual basis uh, in young ladies um, would be the, the most common cancers. Prostate cancer needs to be an ongoing discussion between the physician and the patient, and so bringing that up as a as a gentleman with your with your primary care doctor is very important. So uh, for that, uh, the PSA test is mm -hmm. that what uh, people would get to determine if they might have uh, exactly. prostate cancer? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So uh, obviously, uh, it sort of starts a lot of times with their primary care doctor, and that's why our healthcare self-care campaign we're promoting going to see your primary, get a checkup, get a tune-up. Tell us about why that's important in, in the journey of determining if you might have cancer. Well, there's a lot of things that the primary care doctor checks for that are not intuitive. So they need to be checking at, you know, once in your lifetime for hyperferritinemia, it's a special iron test. They need to be following up your blood sugars. They can catch diabetes before it kind of ravages your body and causes all sorts of problems. There's a number of things that the primary care doctor does that checks for you to keep you kind of um, at your top of your game in terms of your health. So how important is it to catch cancer early as far as outcomes go? Well, almost always, the earlier you catch it, the better your outcomes are. When you catch it very early, you can be completely cured. Even if it can't be potentially cured, your, your prognosis, your response to treatment, the side effects of treatment usually are dramatically better and much, uh, much more tolerable. Right, which is so important why you have to have a primary care doctor so you can start early and try to exactly. figure out everything thing that can change within your body. Well, sure. give, give us an example of one. Uh, pick a, one of the various cancers where maybe you've come across someone you caught it early and they were able to have a good outcome well colonoscopies people get colonoscopies they num you know they it's not uncommon to find polyps many of those polyps left alone would eventually turn into cancer so you're able to remove those polyps from the intestinal tract before they turn into cancer our actual incidence of colon cancer is actually dropping because of our ability to detect cancer, be, sorry, lay, uh, nodules before they become cancer. There's so many types of cancer, so many dimensions of what you guys do, uh, but one of them is our radiation oncologist that you work with. Tell mm -hmm. us about how you interact with them and what's an example of something that you would collaborate with them on for treatment. Well, we have two radiation oncologists, Dr. Uh, Bechtel and Dr. Green. We feel, we see them uh, on a, at least once a week, if not twice a week, during our tumor boards. Almost all new patients are presented at our tumor boards and we treat patients in a collective manner with our surgeons and the radiation oncologists to give our patients the best care possible, be that breast cancer, colon cancer, lung cancers. Um, you know. So a lot of times they can be treated with uh, this, what they use instead of surgically, a lot of times. Is that, is that uh, It depends. For them? There's various 
steps to the cancer treatment process, and so it's always a team. Could involve approach. a combination of both, but either exactly. way, having them on your team as a part of your arsenal is really a, a real benefit. Exactly. So, you know, I did my training back at MD Anderson, and there there was always a team-based approach in terms of taking care of patients, and we, we do that here as well in terms of making sure that you have a whole team that's taking care of your cancer. There's so much you bring to the table. We could talk about this all day, but we just got a few more minutes. Uh, and one thing, since you brought it up, uh, both the team-based approach and the tumor board, um, I have sat in on some of those, and I tell you, uh, I would want to be in this system as a patient because I see when you guys bring together all the disciplines, pulmonology and the surgeons and cardiology, just so many different disciplines come together to study these, these complex cases. Tell us a little bit about your perspective on the tumor board, because a lot of people don't know what that, that means. Tell them about what you do. And well, at, at, at least twice a week, there's easily 25 physicians sitting around a table or by video conference who are going through all their most complicated and most interesting cases that they've had, or, or patients that they've had to take care of for the preceding week. Um, so, you know, someone presents the case, we then, the surgeons chime in in terms of their aspect, the radiation doctors chime in in terms of their aspect, the pathology is reviewed, all the images are reviewed, and essentially we take the chart from top to bottom and go through and make sure that we're giving the patient the best care possible. It's one of the things I'm most proud of what our system does. That's how healthcare should work. Multidisciplinary approach, different doctors collaborating together for a good outcome for the patient. We should do a 401 on the tumor board. Uh, that might be a good one. But anyway, we so thank you for what you do, and we're so excited that you're on the team. This cancer center is just really nice. It's just uh, an amazing uh, environment for patients to be treated. So, and we're so anyway. excited to expand healthcare and better access to cancer care right here in Harrison County. And yep. uh, we can't wait to see what we do. Help us stay singing over strong.